today I'll be sharing with you my mini children's books haul which I got recently from Kinokuniya. So the reason why I decided to get the books from there is because I have actually compared the prices uh, with Book Depository which is an online uh, bookshop that sells pretty affordable books and Kinokuniya was selling these books for cheaper than Book Depository that's why I decided to get it on the spot and I would like to share what I've got with you so for the books, we I got 3 books, just 3 very mini mini haul and um, some of you might have heard of these books before because because they're quite popular um, one of them is The Day the Crayons Quit I just realised Never mind, I'll read it for you instead since it's like mirror image We'll see Anyways, it's by Drew Daywatt and the pictures are by Oliver Jeffers So Oliver Jeffers is a very well known um, illustrator children's books illustrator and author but this one is only this book is only illustrated by him. So you can see it's a very popular children's book. And it's basically about crayons quitting their job. So it's a very fun book I would say. So let me just read this part out for you, okay? So poor Duncan just wants to do some colouring. But when he opens his box of crayons, all he finds are letters, each saying the same things. We quit. Beige is tired of playing second fiddle to brown. Blue needs a break from colouring all that water, while pink just wants to be used. Green has no complaints, but orange and yellow aren't speaking to each other. What is Duncan to do? Debut author Drew Dayward and renowned picture bookmaker Oliver Jeffers create a colourful solution in this lively, imaginative story that will have children laughing and playing with their crayons in a whole new way. So it sounds like a really fun book exploring maybe the perspective of crayons and look at the illustration even the words it looks like the children it looks like children's handwriting and children's drawing using crayons which is very very nice whoa it looks cool and I think it will be a really fun book to read with children and you can explore colors with this as well and maybe writing like how they write the signs so a lot of users can be made out of this book with children in class so another book that I think I'm pretty sure it's the sequel to the previous book is the day the crayon came home so you see it's also pretty popular and it's also done by the same author, Drew Dayward, and also illustrated by Oliver Jeffers. So this book contains special glow-in-the-dark drawing, wow! So uh, as you can see, this is a hardback book, not like that. the other one which was like paperback. And I guess we could talk about postcards. This looks like postcards. Yeah, like writing postcards and letters, which once again you can it can be used in class as classroom activities. So same thing, written in crayon on postcards, letter writing. A bit go in the dark. I'm pretty sure this go in the dark. So cool. I'm not sure if there's actual like go in the dark crayon though. Yeah, so. I guess this is the gist of the book. Mm. Last page. Yeah, so I think this makes a good uh, book to be used in class as well. Same, pretty much almost the same as the first book, this one. You can talk about writing, colors, making signs for the first book and letters and notes and this one can be about postcards like where to get postcards how can you send out postcards what can you write on postcards and who you can send these postcards to these are all like really fun ideas that you can do with your children in class or at home even yeah so the last book that i got because i only got three is also by this is 
by Oliver Jeffers. It's written and illustrated by him. And it's the heart and the bottle. Okay. So behind it says, Once there was a girl whose life was filled with wonder. It's also a really popular children's book. Yeah. So let me just read like the synopsis. What is it about to you? So once there was a girl whose life was filled with wonder at the world around her. Then one day, something happened that made the girl take her heart and put it in a safe place. However, after that, it seemed that the world was emptier than before. But would she know how to get her heart back? In this deeply moving story, Oliver Jeffers deals with the weighty themes of love and loss with an extraordinary lightness of touch and shows us ultimately there is always hope. So, as compared to the other two books about the crayon, this book will be discussing on themes as they say like uh, of love and loss which are a bit more, I would say, deeper than and something more heavy hearted than something fun like the crayon book. Um, I personally believe that it's okay to discuss about such topics that most people might view it as um, sensitive to children because they have the ability to understand what's going on around them and they it helps um, promote their how to say promote their empathy their sense of empathy towards others and helps them understand their feelings better as well which will help them in managing and regulating their own emotions when ever they get upset or angry or feel certain kind of loss that they have encountered at home so it's it if a child ever experiences loss before this book serves as like a mirror to show them that they are not alone it's relatable there are people that are going through what they have gone through before and for those who have not gone through loss before it serves as a window instead yeah so it helps them peep into how is it like for these people who have experienced experienced loss helps them to be more understanding open-minded towards their friends or other people who have experienced loss and when then and when time when the time comes they will know how to handle it yeah so this book is obviously a bit more touchy feeling it hits the heart more it hits home more um, it's very meaningful but that does not mean that we do not talk about these topics with children it can be discussed as long as it's in an appropriate way in a level that they understand and yeah um, I'm saying all this because I have done a bit of research for my uh, re teacher research report for school um, I did about my teacher research report like it's something like a thesis so what I did like my topic was about using children's books to promote inclusive attitudes among children so from that report I have obviously need to have like you know done did some research on journal articles about anti-bias education uh, inclusiveness inclusivity in the classroom bibliotherapy it's benefits and its users so using books to talk about sensitive topics counts as or like topics that help children understand their feelings better and thoughts better is counted as bibliotherapy so it's not unheard of it's pretty common it's commonly used you might have used it before and you might not have known that it's called bibliotherapy like for example some people use books to um, introduce the idea of having another sibling to children so that's one example so the thing about children's books is that it can be fun like this and you can teach um, other 
skills and domains, learning domains to children using such books like this. And you can also use books like this to discuss topics that you would not normally talk about with children. Some people might find it like a taboo. They would choose not to share and talk about these topics with these children because they want to protect children's innocence, which is understandable. But at the same time, I feel that we should not underestimate children's. Yes, I was saying, um, I can't really remember what I talked about just now, but I'm pretty sure it's along the lines of wanting to protect a child's innocence. Innocence. Protect a child's innocence and trying to shield them from these sensitive topics that even adults, even some adults, would not want to talk about. So, I just feel that it's okay to talk about it to children as long as it's developmentally appropriate for them where you know that they can understand it and they can process it. Yeah, it helps with their social emotional development as well. It builds empathy, it helps them to be more open-minded minded, and yes, there's a lot of benefits to bibliotherapy and it's worth exploring for both um, educators and parents. Yeah, so I think that's all. I've come to an end to this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like more content like this, like talking about early childhood related matters, do remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the like, bu like button if you enjoyed this video. And remember to ring that notification bell button to be updated whenever I upload a new video too. That's all and Thank you for watching!